In today's episode, we'll be painting this Mercedes Benz. We're replacing the fender on this, so we'll be painting that, and we'll be blending into this door and this bumper cover. Now we are gonna be doing a smart repair on this bumper cover where we blend the clear coat. So I'll share with you all the steps to doing that and how to lay down a beautiful looking base coat, clear coat finish. Jairus went ahead and taped up this Mercedes Benz. And as you can see here, we have a funny little tape job here. So what we're gonna do, the only reason we're painting this bumper cover is to blend the color. So we're gonna blend into the edge of this and then we're gonna clear right here. So we've looped this paper. So when we apply our clear, it doesn't travel over the rest of that bumper. Sanded this with 600 grit sandpaper out into here. And then we scuff this with a gray scuff pad. That's about a 15, 1000 to 1500 grit for our blend. This is where we're gonna blend our clear right here. We've got our fender set up over here. We've sanded this with 600 grit sandpaper. This is an OEM aluminum fender. We are gonna seal this before we paint it. Now, as far as the door, when you're doing a repair on your vehicle, it's always best to strip off all the accessories as possible, as much as possible. So we've stripped off the door handle, the mirror, the lower cladding. We do have a couple little chips here on the bottom of this door that we're gonna blend in and take care of. Those weren't part of the repair. This is a blend panel only. So we're gonna blend the color here and then we'll clear coat over it. And that'll give us a good transition from the new color to the old. That is what a blend does. It tricks your eye. If the color's a little bit off, a shade off, it's gonna trick your eye in believing that it's the same color. The paint we're using today is the Nascent XL. This is a reasonably priced paint. I picked this up at my local O'Reilly's. They mixed it up for me. I used to have a mixing bank here, but I just don't do enough painting to warrant a mixing bank. We just have them mix it up, and this is the Mercedes Polar White. Now the clear coat we're using today is the Finish One FC710. This is a spot panel clear, a really good clear coat. It buffs well and it lays out nice. And we're gonna use the Finish One Slow Hardener. You always wanna make sure you're using the right speed hardener for the temperature you're spraying in. They make a slow, a medium, and a fast. I'll we'll also be using the Segola DPC Cup. Segola has come out with their own disposable cup system, the sleeve housing and measuring cup. I think it's 40 or 50 uh, liners. And then this is the collar that locks it on. And here are the lids. This is a 190 micron filter on the back side of this. So we'll be using this cup system. And these are reasonably priced. You can check those out. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so we're gonna mix up a little bit of sealer, spray this fender. Uh, I'm using the U-Pull sealer. This is actually primer. They can be used as sealer. So to mix it up as sealer, you mix it up four parts primer, one part activator, and two parts of the urethane reducer. Here's the mix mixing ratio here, four to one to one, okay? So we're gonna put four parts of the primer, one part of the activator, and then we're gonna have to double up this one to two. So we'll double that up to two, and then we'll have sealer. One, stir it up here. Lock in the cap. I always like to lift it up, make sure everything's sealed. And then we'll put on our collar. Okay, we're gonna wash this. We got a microfiber towel here. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol. Okay, we'll tack rag this off real quick. Okay, so we're gonna use the Segola 3300 GTO to apply the sealer. I've got my fan pattern wide open. My fluid volume, I'm gonna do two turns out from closed. One full turn, two full turns. We'll see how that does. And then as far as the air pressure, I think I'm gonna tr try and set this at about 18 PSI. So this is a tack rag. It's just a sticky cloth that we wipe down any dust that might have landed on the surface before we start applying any substrate. So sealer, uh, paint, clear coat. We want to make sure it's clean before we start. Now we're going to apply this just like we would paint. I'm going to overlap about 70%, 75%. I want a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. I want it to lay out smooth.
nice and smooth. We'll let this flash off or cure. Once it's been about 10, 15 minutes, we can go ahead and lay our base on it. All right, now we're gonna mix the paint. We'll add our one part reducer. There we go, locked in. We're using the uh, low volume, low pressure YT-160. So with this gun, we're gonna open up the fan pattern wide open. Um, two and a half turns out from closed on the fluid volume. The air pressure, we're gonna run this at around probably 20 PSI. I want it to be nice and smooth. This is a low volume, low pressure paint gun. Works really well if you're a DIYer in your garage. Low overspray, material savings, and it does produce a beautiful looking finish. Just a light tack to make sure there's no dust that's landed on this. Kind of inspect it. You want to kind of inspect it, look for any particles of dust or anything of that nature. If you do have a particle of dust, you can easily sand that out with, lightly with a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper. So I did a pretty light coat the first one. So by the time that had kind of flashed a little bit, I was ready for a second coat. So we'll put, we put a second coat on. We'll let this flash off for a good 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll spray another coat on. Before we put our next coat on, I'm gonna look this over real well for some trash. I wanna make sure there's no trash in this. So I've just, I've just got the gun bud light here. So this coat I'm gonna put on a little bit heavier. It's the third coat. It's always good to put your first coat on a little bit lighter, especially as it gets cooler temperatures. You can have some fish eyeing issues when your base coat is introduced to the surface. So just keep that in mind. There's the third coat, nice and smooth. We'll let this flash off, put one more coat on it, and then we'll do the blend on this door and this bumper, and I'll share with you how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna start the blend on this door. What we wanna do is we wanna do the first four or five inches first, okay? We'll get three coats on there, and then what I, this is just the way I do it, and then I'll blend out into here on the last coat. We'll do a drop coat and we'll get it out into about here, okay? Same situation on the bumper, but we wanna only come out to about here with color, okay? And we're just gonna do it where the fender meets the bumper, so right here and right here. Let that set up, and we'll put another coat on.
turned out most of the lights in here so we can check out this blend. And that blend looks good. Look over here. Now we'll be applying the clear coat right to about this point and then we'll wash it in. I'll share with you how to do that. Let's go ahead and mix up some clear coat. We're gonna mix up some clear coat, finish one FC 710, and then the slow hardener. This mixes up four to one, so we'll find the four to one mixing ratio. Then we're gonna go two and two. If we have enough here. Spray some clear. Okay, so we're setting this gun up with the fan pattern wide open. I'm gonna go two and a half turns out from close. So we closed it all the way. One full turn, two full turns, and then a half. You want thin, wet coats. We're gonna put two coats of clear on this. We'll apply the first coat, medium wet. It's not gonna be absolutely perfect. The second coat is where you're gonna get the elite finish that you're looking for, a nice slick finish. We want this to be kind of OEM, so we want a little bit of texture in it. The way you apply this is you wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. I'm gonna be about four to five inches away, but usually I'll move as quick as I can. If I wanna move a little quicker, I just move a little bit closer to the panel and then I move quicker. That's putting more material on the panel if I move closer to the panel. Set this gun up at 30 PSI on the air pressure. So let's go ahead and lay our first coat on. We've looked this over, it's nice and clean. We don't have a lot of trash in it. So it's always a good idea to inspect your panel before you go applying clear coat. So if you inspect the panel and you see a particle of dust or something of that nature, you wanna sand that out. You can lightly sand that out with some fine sandpaper. I use 600 and then I'll put another coat of base on it real quick. And then we're ready for some clear coat. Okay, so that's the first coat of clear. We'll move over and put our first coat on this door. Okay, so this is the first coat. Let's take a look at it. Nice and glossy. A little bit of texture on the lower part of it, so I'll make sure, a little bit too much texture right over there. We'll make sure we slick that out on the second coat. Let's go ahead and spray a first coat on this bumper. We're only gonna spray to about right here. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, let's see how it looks. Right there is the end of the blend. One more coat on this, and then right after we put that coat, I'm gonna spray U-Pull number nine on here. This is a product that's gonna help that clear to bite, the new clear to bite into the old clear. Now we're just doing this so we have a good color match on this bumper cover. Typically we would spray this entire bumper cover, but this is what we're doing on this job and situation. It's, re it's just tacky, it's ready for the second coat. So let's go ahead and lay another coat on this. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is when you're making your passes, you wanna overlap about 70 to 80%. So as I make a pass here, when I come back, I wanna overlap that previous pass about 70%. This helps you get a uniform consistency in your clear coat and a uniform flow.
Now we're going to wash it in with the U-Pole number 9. Now you can see, right there is where the blend line is. So here's the fender. It looks pretty good. The finish looks good. A few little particles of dust, not a big deal. Right there's one. We'll just cut and buff those out. Overall, this job came out really nice, nice and clean, has a nice OEM finish, and it wasn't that difficult. You guys can do this at home. Just follow the steps and procedures. And if you want to learn how you can remove any imperfections in your clear coat, you can check out this video now. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.